Light. I believe this is the eighth episode, but I'm not very good at keeping track, so it could be the ninth. So um, I would like to first ask anybody listening to please like the video, share it, and subscribe to the channel so we can grow. And my guest today is Danielle, no, Deborah. <laughs> I'm, I'm still stuck on Tuesday or looking ahead to Thursday. I don't know. Um, my That's guest a new is, name. <laughs> right, right. They both start with D. Deborah Itella, is that correct? Yes. Tell our audience something about yourself and about your book. Hi. So thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Welcome. I'm Deborah Itella. I'm the author of the best selling book, Is This Job My Jam? The Guide for Grown Ups Who Still Don't Know What They Want to Be. I am also a podcaster. I have a new podcast coming out shortly um, called I Freaking Knew It, all about intuition. I had a prior podcast called A Tell It Like It Is, and I kind of switched gears. I'm That's a very a clever name, by the way. Right. <laughs> um, I'm also a certified Reiki master, meditation teacher, and life coach. So basically, I spend my days helping women figure out how to live their best lives. So I'm going to read from chapter one of my book, Is This Job My Jam? The Guide for Grownups Who Still Don't Know What They Want to Do, What They Want to Be. It's nice that I know the title to my own book. <laughs> uh, is This Job My Jam? If you don't like the path you're walking, start paving another one. Sally Parton. What do I want to be when I grow up? Why am I still asking myself this question? Is it even possible for me to start something new at this point in my life? Why can't I just suck it up and accept that I'm never going to figure this out? Why am I such a freaking mess? I should win an Oscar for the performance I turn in every day. No one knows how unsatisfied, confused, stuck, bored, and resentful I am. They also don't know how embarrassed, guilty, shameful, hopeless, and ungrateful I feel for having these feelings in the first place. Ugh. Sound familiar? All around you, people are posting things on social media about how they are pursuing their purpose, following their passions, and living their best lives ever. Meanwhile, you wake up every day with a nagging pit in your stomach that you just know you were made for more than your same thing, different day life. Everyone seems to have their lives more together than you, and that stresses you out. Maybe you thought you had it all figured out, but something happened and now you have to start all over. Maybe nothing happened, but what you thought would be great isn't all it's cracked up to be. Maybe you never had anything figured out and you're exhausted of trying to make sense of it all. Your thoughts are like a broken record. You keep playing the scene track over and over again. The lyrics go something like this. I'll never figure this out. I'm not qualified or smart enough. I need to go back to school. I'm scared. I'm too old to make a change. You're wondering why there isn't a DJ to change the track and rescue you from these sour notes. This song is not your jam. What is your jam? Who is going to help you find it? How much longer can you go on without figuring this out? You keep looking for answers and validation outside of yourself. Maybe deep down, you know you're the one and you have the power to choose a new song, but you're scared to make a change. Where would you even start to create a whole new playlist? You keep focusing on whether it won't work out the way you thought it would. What if your change makes the people around you uncomfortable? What will everyone say if you leave guaranteed money and job security to go after an uncertain dream or just try something new? These are valid and common questions and concerns. Change is exciting, but it's also uncomfortable. Change triggers anger, frustration, anxiety, and fear. That's perfectly normal. Don't beat yourself up if you notice this happening. Something is pushing you to make a change with your job. If you were happy and content with your situation, chances are you won't be reading this book. Truth of the matter, my dear friend, is that nothing in life is certain or guaranteed except taxes and death. That's it. Everything else is subject to change in the blink of an eye. Life is short, it gets messy, but there are things that you do get to control and decide. You can control your thoughts, your attitude, your efforts, and your actions. You get to decide how to spend your days earning money to support your life. Right now, you feel overwhelmed. 
It's like you have no way to choose your job or no idea what job is best for you or your lifestyle. This is a problem. Maybe you've tried to solve it in the past, but never followed through or you did and it still didn't get better. Maybe this is the first time you're ready to try to dance to a new tune. No matter what, I want you to know I've been there and I've coached people through this. Fulfilling positive change is possible and waiting for you to claim it. That's great. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to mention what I'm drinking today. I kind of wanted to pick Ovaltine or Tang because your book is about when we don't know what we want to do when we grow up. Yes. <laughs> I didn't I didn't have Ovaltine or Tang on hand. I didn't feel <laughs> like going out to buy it, but we did have uh ginger beer, which I believe is not really a beer at all. It's more like root beer. Mm -hmm. And to me, that just seemed like something kids would like to drink on a summer day. And it kind of spoke to me back to an earlier time, too, when I don't think people really put so much thought into what do I want to do? What do I want to be? Because they tended to just be whatever was available in the area or be whatever their father was or follow in the family footsteps. And this is a big, huge thing today. Um, I was kind of struck by the title because I am among what I think are the lucky few. I've known what I wanted to be since almost the day I was born, you know, since I was capable of thought. And um, but I think that's highly unusual. And so I was curious, number one, do you have figures how common is it for people to just know what they want to be i don't have actual figures um i just have always been fascinated by people <laughs> who have known what they wanted to be their whole mm -hmm. lives like i have friends that i grew up with like who wanted to be a nurse and their whole life mm -hmm. and they're a nurse or a teacher you know or an accountant i just had no clue growing uh -huh. up. So i've always been fascinated by those people and see, in my experience, when I talk to other people, I was surprised when I realized I think most people are more lost. Like, well, it's my whole life. I don't know what I want to do for my whole life. Mm -hmm. Whereas I knew when I was 11 that I wanted to be a professional musician. And I knew when I was nine that I wanted to work with dolphins. And I knew when I was eight that I wanted to be a writer. I've done two of those three. Um, I don't have a pool big enough for dolphins. I don't have a degree that would enable me to work with them. But I have done writing and music and I've known my entire life. That's what I want to do. So was it your experience that led you to write the book? So it was. I spent my adult life working at jobs that were not my jam. I have never had a job that I didn't know someone who got me in, got me the interview, recommended me for, even as far back as when I graduated from college. I went to college, I didn't, have, I started off as a psychology major, I didn't like it. I picked my major based on the fact that I had friends that were taking, I was a criminal justice major, had friends that were taking criminal justice, or like, take classes with us. So I did, I'm like, oh, I'll go to law school, the time came, I was gonna graduate. I was like, I can't be in school another minute. I got a job, which was really crazy as an adult probation officer for the city of Philadelphia. New people that were doing that, that worked in the court system, got me the interview. Um, and then I went on from there. I worked um, doing insurance claims. My insurance uh, man was like, hey, you should do this. This would be great for you. And I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll be a fraud investigator. Get my foot in the door. I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to have more babies. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to step out for a while. <laughs> have more babies. Um, Cause I had had my first son when I was a PO, you know, and then like I had all these crazy part-time jobs as a mom. Uh -huh. uh, it started to get a little bit older. I owned a business that I bought from someone that we knew on the periphery of our lives, huge disaster. Got other, got another job working for a friend. I never had a job that I went into that I knew what it was or how to do it. Mm -hmm. But I am always the best one, the best worker there. I come in, I pay attention, I learn, I get bored, 
then I learn your job, then I'm bored, then I learn the next person's job, and I'm bored, and now I'm indispensable. Because now I know how to do all things that I wasn't even hired for. I learned how to do the job I was hired for. Now I learned how to do the things that everybody else does. Now I'm indispensable and I can't take off and I don't get a raise. <laughs> I also don't advocate. I know people in that my, position. Right? And then I also yeah. don't advocate for myself and realize, oh, I'm the one that has to like speak up. Mm -hmm. So I go through when... 2017, I go through this whole period of 50 was on the horizon, right? I'm going to be 50 soon. And shouldn't I know what I want to be by the time I'm 50? Right. You yeah. know, I have friends that were going to be retiring like shortly, but that wasn't going to be the case for me. We had bought a business, my husband and I, a retail business. It was a disaster. We were going to be working for some time, but shouldn't I like it? And I'm making all this money for someone else shouldn't I be making this money for myself? I mean, I got to figure it out. So I right. made this deal with myself in 2017 to meditate every single day. And I have been meditating for years, but not every day. I make this promise to myself. I'm going to meditate every day, except I have one problem. I'm a big quitter. How am I going to stick to this promise? So I decided I just have to do it for one minute a day for a year. And I do it. And in that year, and some days it's a minute, some days it's a lot of minutes, but no matter what, I do it. And in that year, my life opened up to things that I, I just couldn't believe. All different things just kept falling into my lap and I just kept meeting people and started to learn about coaching. And I was like, oh God, I've been coaching people my whole life and didn't even realize it, right? Mm -hmm. So now I start like trying it out try it out enough. I'm like, I'm good at this. I go and I take classes and I get certification and now I'm doing it like as a side hustle. Mm -hmm. Now it's going pretty great. I like, I'm going to quit my full-time job and I ended up leaving my full-time job to do it, to work for myself full-time. And then that also led me to energy work. I had been receiving energy work for years, denying that I had any kind of gift, you mm -hmm. know, and then that being all opened up to me and just started to have women come to me that were in the same position that I had been in. Like, why can't I figure my life out? Like on paper, mm -hmm. I have this great life, but why am I unhappy? Right. You know, like I, I feel ungrateful or I'm miserable. Why am I miserable? But I should be happy. And mm -hmm. I developed this program and then I ended up putting it all in a book and writing about it. And here we are. And here um, we are. And, and I'm really curious, and again, I can't really understand this because I was born to do music and writing. Yes. I just, you know, I have no doubt of that. But how do you help someone figure out what they want to do if they themselves don't know? Do you have questions you ask to kind of help guide them or a test they take? So sometimes the easiest thing to do is to figure out what you don't want, right? We know it's mm -hmm. not working. So in the book, I take people through my signature program, which is called INCH. So I is for identify. So we can't change anything until we know what we're changing, right? Mm -hmm. So what's our problem? What's our goal? What's our feelings, right, around the, these things? Then we go into N, which is non-negotiable. What are your values and your priorities? And I have to say, as a coach, I ask like all my clients when they come in, tell me like some of your values and I get like deer in the headlights look but you need to know what your values are so that you're making decisions that are in line what is best for you right mm -hmm. so what are your values and priorities they're your non-negotiables right then we move into C is for change how do we make change and how do we how do we come up with like all the, you know, we're going to get derailed, things are going to happen. How can we make things as easy and small as possible so we don't get overwhelmed and quit? How can we, you know, really embrace and make a change? And then the H stands for hallelujah, which is really celebration, but I had to make the acronym work. Um, <laughs> I like that. Right. So without celebrating ourselves, we are stuck in a constant task loop at doing the same thing over and over again. We go from one thing to the next. You need to stop and acknowledge yourself. 
And it can be as small as patting yourself on the back, doing a little dance, high-fiving yourself, going outside, having a snack, a treat, walking your dog, something that just makes you smile and makes you happy. It doesn't have to cost anything, you know? And then as we go through the whole program, what I have found in like nine out of 10 people, it's, it's the same thing. People will come to me, their job is not their jam, they're miserable, their job's not their problem. It very rarely is that their job is their problem. What ends up being their problem? Then they are okay. not doing anything to take care of themselves. They are okay. not doing anything that they enjoy in life. Not even forget mm -hmm. their jobs, like in life in general. They're, they're just going from, you know, the housework, the kids, the spouse, the friends, the family, right. the, all of right. that without ever stopping to be like, what matters to me? What lights right. me up? You know, and that's that's kind of one of the things that I address in the journal that I put together. It's called the four spheres habits for building a better life. And it does address that this very ancient philosophy that each day we need to do something physical, something mental, something spiritual and something emotionally satisfying. Mm -hmm. And so I've created that journal to say you need to write it down every day did you do something emotionally satisfying and um i just i find it interesting how often these same sorts of topics come up when i'm talking with authors and i just wonder if there's something about the author mindset that seems to seek these ideas out you know like about gratitude and doing something that makes you feel fulfilled and joyful and happy each day well, it changes your life, right? Like a gratitude practice mm -hmm. will change your life. Yep. And yep. people think it's silly, right? Or they think it's like, you know, toxic positivity. No, there, you can find something like some days, you know, like at the end of the day, I like, you know, think, okay, what was the best thing that happened today? Some days it's I stayed alive, right? Or yep. I drank water. Like that's about <laughs> it. You know, some days that's all there and is. And yet when we remember around the world, not everybody has fresh, right. clean, cold water. Yes. It's, yes. it's, see, this is why I called you Danielle, because I just talked to Danielle on Tuesday and we talked about the same exact thing. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I just, I knew somehow. <laughs> yeah. So how long has your book been out? Since um, July of 2021. Okay, so you've had a lot of time to get feedback. Are you selling it primarily online to clients to so it's you know, on Amazon? Mm -hmm. okay. Amazon. I've done a lot of talks. I've done a lot of podcast interviews. Um, worked it, you know, with my clients as well. Although even the clients that I had before I had this book out, you know, mm -hmm. we've, we've done this um, program. Yes, and I've so, got great feedback. I, I found it very interesting that you said a lot of times the job really isn't the issue. How often then do you find that the person really does find a new job that better suits them versus they do those internal changes and all of a sudden are happy at their job? So I would say it's not that they're happy about their job. They're just uh -huh. happier in general. Okay. So now they're not like in agony over going to this job that they have put all of their like angst or annoyance or, mm -hmm. you know, like resentment on. Now they have right. like this other outlet and they're able to like let go of things that, you know, were really because you're at your job more than you are not, you know, yep. Yep. It's, it's easy to see all the things that are wrong all the time, mm -hmm. right? Now, there there are a lot of people that come to me, you know, they're making great money, they have wonderful health insurance, and like, you know, the whole vacation package, the time off package, all of it. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to give that up. And it can right. be as simple as doing it somewhere else for another mm -hmm company that's more aligned with their values because maybe you know somebody's value is like diversity but everybody at their office looks exactly the same and so they have like this rub that they don't like you know like i don't like this this goes against who i am as a person i want to work in a diverse environment so they get the same job somewhere else uh-huh or they like they like what they're doing um 
but not in the city that they're in or they mm-hmm. don't like, you know, most people now are, you know, working from home since COVID or a hybrid, right. You know, right. a hybrid situation, you know, for a lot of people before it was their commute that they didn't like. And then, and then people that have been called back to the office, they're like, I don't want this. I want more of a hybrid situation. And then they're mm-hmm. like changing companies for those reasons, but not actually changing the thing they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know? So a lot of it is really finding out what's dissatisfying you. Yes. What yes. about what about for the people, let's say, going into college, 23, 24, who literally just have no idea what kind of a job they want to do? What What would be your advice to them? So I have three adult children, right? Mm-hmm. Like, one works in the trades, two are college graduates. And I told, I went through this with all of them. Like, I really want you to think about the kind of life that you want to have. What mm-hmm. are the things that you want to be able to do in your life? Where are the places that you want to go? Who are the people that you want to work with? And now, what are your interests? What lights you up? Two of mm-hmm. my kids are filmmakers. And I have... Oh, very cool. Yes. And I, you know, they also right now have... One has a job kind of like in that field doing editing and animation and things. And the other one works in a different field, but still, you know, making film. And I had friends who were like, are you crazy? Like letting them go to school for that. And I'm like, they are artistically, I cannot tell these people what to do with their lives. I just want them to find something that they're so happy about that lights them up, that they're not miserable about doing it every day. So I just have to tell you a funny story and I've probably told it on this program before. Um, I loved teaching music lessons. And so my kids are all adults now too. The youngest is 19, but there are nine of them. And so nine kids is a lot of lights left on over the years. (laughs) And so I kept saying, turn off the light, turn off the light. I was nice. I was polite. One day I just got frustrated. I said, turn off the lights. I work hard to pay these electric bills. And they threw my words back in my face because I always told them, find a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And they threw that right back in my face. Mom, you love your job. You never work a day in your life. (laughs) (laughs) That's fantastic. So yeah, it kind of backfired on me. But I hope that by seeing that example, that they really got that idea. And um, I, I think I think most of them are happy with what they're doing. Some of them have ended up in places I don't think they expected to be. But, you know, that's, that's where they are. So where can people find your book and where can they find you online? So you can find my book on Amazon. You also, if you go on my website at DebraAtella.com, if you join my mailing list, you can get the first three chapters for free in PDF form. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, But the actual book and then the ebook are both on um, Amazon. You could also find me on Instagram at DebraAtella, D-E-B-O-R-A-H-A-T-E-L-L-A. People can find me at lauravosica.com, at booksandbrews.net, and we are on all the social media, and it would take me forever to list all of that, but it can all be found fairly easily because there aren't that many Laura Vosicas in the world. (laughs) Um, One other, as far as I know. So thank you very much. Oh, did you want to tell the audience what you're drinking? So I have um, some vodka and cranberry, right? Oh, you came prepared. I did, (laughs) a little twist of lime. And because I'm from the Philly area, it's stateside vodka. That's a local vodka. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so so the day I didn't go alcoholic, my guest does. (laughs) Actually, on this Books and Brews Lights, most of my drinks have not been alcoholic. Alcoholic. So anyway, cheers. Thank you.